I got to tell you, man, this is going back to when you were at Southern Indiana. It doesn't matter where you go. You make winning seem easy. How do you do this? Hey, Dan, good to be with you, man. So happy for you, what you got going on there. Um, you know what? When I left Tom Davis, Tom Davis gave me two pieces of advice. He said, number one, he said, do what we do because that's what you know. You don't try to don't try to understand this system. Don't do different something else. And the second thing is you can't be me. Be yourself. So for better or worse, be, be authentic. Dr. Tom Davis was, was, was a different dude. He was way smarter than I was, right? Um, and I've just carried that on. And, and uh, I don't know that winning's easy. Just get, get, surround yourself with great players, great people, a great system. If you're any good at anything, you had a pretty good teacher. I had a great teacher in Dr. Tom. But, Coach, I swear to God, man, you, you, you like with Coach Knight, getting a sandwich was hard. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's like, geez, I just want mustard. Well, why do you want mustard? You should get mayo. Stop. You know what I mean? But with you, you wherever you go, it takes about two minutes. Everybody embraces you. You get players and you get going. How have you built this particular team? You know, it was interesting, Dan. We had a, we were the youngest team in college basketball last year. And then we had two guys leave. Uh, and go one and done, uh, J.T. Thorne, Sharif Cooper. And the roster was um, was really, really thin. So the timing of the transfer portal was really good for us. There were two guys that we had recruited that didn't come to Auburn. Uh, uh, Katie Johnson went to Georgia because we had Sharif Cooper, and then he bounced back. And then Walker Kessler, who Stephen had done a great job recruiting. Walker broke our heart, went to North Carolina. Hard to say no to the Tar Heels and Roy Williams. But after a COVID year, and not playing a whole lot, he comes back. And, you know, a great example of just ending it the right way. You know, um, when he told us he was going to North Carolina, that was where the hardest loss we, Steve and I had ever had in recruiting. But we we didn't hate on him or his family. We wished him well, and then he comes back. And then we made two really good evaluations with a couple of mid-major guards. You know, Dan, when you, you know, you've been there at Bowling Green. And, you know, the difference between the guys at Bowling Green and Ohio State – you know, there's a little bit of a difference, but those kids all at Bowling Green, they want to play at the Ohio State. And um, and and so taking some kids that are humble and hungry and maybe we're a little bit overlooked. So th those things, along with having the best high school player in, in, in the country, being about an hour and 15 minutes of our doorstep at Jabari Smith, you add those five pieces to what we turned and you've got, you know, a team that's ranked number two in the country. Coach, people talk, you know, they, like, they, okay, Eric Musselman's been in the NBA. You know, Juwan Howard, Woody, they've been in the NBA, so they know how to mold teams. But I've argued with people. I said, look, at least my, I, from an outsider, when you were at Southern Indiana, this was this was kind of like what you're doing now, wasn't it? You you brought in guys. Here comes this guy transfer. I, you know, he left here. Kind of the same thing a little bit, isn't you know, it? It is, Dan. You know, I don't know. I don't know what the, the sauce is. I just, I know we got a good foundation. I think that I think if if you can get the guys to trust you, if you recruit them the right way and don't overpromise, um, make sure it's like what I learned from Pat Summit. I mean, Pat Summit used she created a brand. It was called the Lady Balls, and 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 uh, look, you asked for this. You told me you wanted to do this. You told me you wanted to share the ball. You told me you were willing to not take possessions off. You told me it was okay to play 27 minutes instead of 35 minutes. You were more concerned about winning than you were about your individual numbers. And like, that's been the key for us is the fact that everybody on a team has got to be productive and try to make sacrifices and nobody can be a pig. And, and we, and, and you know what, there's plenty of food for all of us. When we as a team are successful, you as an individual, will benefit far more than if you as an individual are successful, but the team fails. So you've got to constantly find ways to teach them how to be great teammates, how to be happy for another man's success. And I'm going to just tell you right now, if, if there was a secret sauce in constructing Auburn basketball, it's truly a God thing. It's truly simply this. All right, guys, go to work every day doing the things that God might bless now, Dan, you and I both know when we were younger, that was harder to do than we are a little, as, we're, as we've grown up and stopped being such morons and such idiots. Um, but these guys are still 18, <laughs> 19 years old, and there's so much out there for them to get into. But if you really can believe that and have that faith and then tap it into the discipline that it is required, man, you got, you got, you got a chance. 
And every now and then when they act up, I'm like, okay, okay, God's going to, he's going to be really happy with you cussing me out because I didn't get you enough shots. That's going to really please you. What, what do I say to that? <laughs> Hey, they got nothing. What are some of the methods that you use? I mean, it's it's not, it's just, it's honest to goodness. I got fired because I lied to the NCAA, but the truth of the matter is I'm, I'm, I'm honest to my players. I mean, they just try not to, listen, if, if, if you know when it comes to athletes and competitors, if, if they trust you, not that everything you do is going to be right, not everything you say is going to be right, but if they, if they, Pat Dye, the great, great football coach at Auburn, said, you can coach him as hard as you love him. And if the kids really do believe that you care about them and you want what's best for them and you want them to individually, you know, be, be successful, it's like it's like when I tell my guys, if you got a chance to go to first round, you, you don't need to leave, but you need to get the hell up out of here. And, and our fans would say, <laughs> our fans would say, what are you doing? You could get him for another year. You could, I said, you know what? He's got a, he got a chance. To be, he's going to be – now – if, if a guy's going to bump down the second round, I don't like that move because I do know that when a general manager, a director of player personnel puts his name on a guy in the first round, he's going to do everything he can to make that decision work. The second round guys, they got to fight up to the G league. They got to fight up the hard way. I don't necessarily want that for my guys, especially if they can improve their draft status. So when you're, when you're pushing them out the door, sometimes it, it demonstrates to the rest of them, you know, you really do care about us as much as you care about your own success. How, how important is your staff? How important is Steven in particular, your son? Well, we got a great staff. Um, it was important that Steven came in as the assistant strength coach. And then he worked his way up to the assistant director of basketball operations. Then he became the director of basketball operations. And then he was my youngest full-time assistant coach. So nobody saw anything given to Steven. He worked for it. He earned for it. And more than anything, he was patient. I think the other thing too, he's benefited tremendously by being on a staff with guys like Wes Flanagan, um, a KG veteran, or Ira Bowman who came from the East Coast and was an Ivy League guy. And, 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 and the other guys that I have on my staff and, and uh, we've all grown, grown and gotten better. I trust my, my trust my coaches to do their job and put them, I empower them. Um, and, I, and, I, and I listen to them. And, you know, together we, uh, well, you should see our, our, you know, when we get ready for making a game plan, you know, we're in the office and we're arguing with each other about what to call, uh, what defense is, what's going to work. But once we leave that argument, we're all on the same page and we go make that thing work. Hey, Joby all said this. This is good. Joby all hey. said this. Joby all said, it's not my job to make every right decision, but it is the players and the assistant coach's job to make my decisions work. If you break a huddle and I've called this really crappy play, to get us a basket and everybody leaves out and go, jeez, what are we doing that for? We should be doing this or this or this. We got no chance. We got to play work. <laughs> but if they leave the huddle, they can make my crappy decisions work. And that's what our culture is.